Hello and welcome, this is Mel Scunner, and in this video I'm going to start off a series that will cover how striker fired actions work. This is to replace an older video I had on the subject that I felt needed improvement. In this series, I will cover individual firearms so as to keep things shorter and more focused with the aim to demonstrate different aspects and implementations of a striker fired action. In this video, we will start things off with the Mauser 98K. Mauser action is one that has been around for some time, demonstrating that striker fired actions are really nothing new despite their more recent upsurge of popularity in modern pistols. And the popularity of Mauser rifles has spread its usage widely, making it a perfect starting point for this series. The most basic element of a striker fired action is the striker itself. Think of the striker as a spring loaded plunger, like what you see in the launcher of a pinball machine. The striker is held back by the sear, and with the pull of the trigger, the sear will be pulled downwards, releasing the striker. Once the striker is released, it will be driven forward by the force of the striker's spring into the base of the primer, igniting it and firing off the cartridge. Striker fired actions will be cocked, or in other words, brought back into a position to be held by the sear ready to fire in one of two ways, either cocking on the opening or closing of the bolt. In the case of the Mauser 98K, the action is a cock on open design. We will see a cock on close example in a future video. What this means for the Mauser is that the striker will be cocked on the initial opening of the bolt. The operator of the firearm begins the process of opening the bolt by rotating the bolt handle. As the bolt rotates, the rear end of the striker will cam or right along a slope cutout at the rear of the bolt. This slope surface will drive the striker rearwards to its fully cocked position. It is at this point of rotation of the bolt that the operator of the firearm will experience resistance of the striker spring, requiring a bit of force to be exerted. Once the bolt is fully rotated, it can be pulled to the rear, at which point the spent cartridge is extracted and ejected. Extraction is done through the use of the extractor claw, pulling the rim around the base of the cartridge out of the chamber. A spring-loaded ejector then slides into a slot in the bolt and kicks out the cartridge as the bolt comes fully to the rear. As the bolt is pushed back forward, a new cartridge will be stripped from the magazine and fed up into the chamber. As the bolt comes forward, the striker will catch on the sear. This allows it to remain in the fully cocked position as the bolt is rotated back into the locked position. The bolt locks as it is rotated due to the lugs on the bolt turning within corresponding cutouts in the receiver. Once the lugs are seated behind these locking shoulders, they cannot be driven back by the recoil energy of the fired cartridge. With the striker held back by the sear and the bolt locked in place, the rifle is ready to be fired again. As the trigger pivots the sear out of contact with the striker, the striker will come forward into the cutout space at the back of the bolt, ready to be cocked again by the rotating bolt, and thus the cycle begins anew. I hope this video has helped give you a little bit of an understanding of the basics of how a striker fired action works. In future videos in this series, we will take a look at alternative methods of operation and move through history to more modern designs. I also hope you have enjoyed the video. This is Mouse Gunner, signing out.